Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. I hope you had a good Captain Stefan Rasmussen has been in love with flying all of his life. I got my first idea of flying when I was a young boy. After learning to fly in the Air Force, Rasmussen joined Scandinavian Airlines. He seemed to like be the one who really enjoyed his job. On December the 27th, 1991, he's in command of a state-of-the-art DC-9. The flight will take him to the very edge of his abilities, as his engines fail and his plane falls out of the sky. I was in a nightmare. Stockholm, Scandinavian 751, we are crashing into the ground now. What caused the most baffling accident in Sweden's history is nothing investigators could have imagined. What they finally uncover will strain Rasmussen's lifelong relationship with airplanes to the breaking point. I really felt that I didn't trust the, the aircraft. Mayday, mayday. It's two days after Christmas. Stockholm Arlanda Airport is a mess of snow, slush, and ice. Passengers boarding a mid-morning Scandinavian Airlines flight to Copenhagen are finding the cabin very uncomfortable. It was really warm inside the plane when we entered because there had been like heaters on during night. And I saw when the passengers embarked they also wanted to take off like jackets and shoes and because it was like a sauna. Is it possible to turn the heat down now? Thirty four year old Ulf Sedermark has been with the airline for four years. He's the first officer on today's flight. It was a light snowfall. Temperature was just below freezing and light winds. We were going to fly Stockholm to Copenhagen and then to Warsaw, back to Copenhagen and down to Barcelona that day. It would be a quite a long working day. Stefan Rasmussen has just finished an exterior check of the plane. The Danish pilot is in command this morning. In those over 12, almost 13,000 hours I've been sitting in an aircraft. I always felt that I, I put the aircraft and back on my, like a rucksack. And, and when we uh, took lift on the wings, we melted together. The plane Rasmussen is strapping on today is a nearly new DC-9, easily identifiable by its two rear engines. By now, everyone should know that door stays open. Right. <laughs> Even in the days before terrorist threats, flying with the cockpit door open is unusual. It's just one way Rasmussen has endeared himself to the crews and passengers he flies with. I always had my cabin door open because I found out that if we had the door open and they could see that there were a human being in there, they'd trust you. For me, it felt good that the door was open. It just feels like you have a connection more than if the door is closed. The winter weather has delayed this flight, but Rasmussen won't compromise safety for schedule. Where are we now? Look at the icing. The winds aren't quite done. They've done the underside. Now they're doing the top. Thank you. Under Captain Rasmussen's instructions, the ground crew had already de-iced the plane once. Now they're giving it another pass. And it took a while, but they had trouble getting rid of the snow on top of the wing. So we were slightly late for our pushback out to our runway. For Captain Per Holmberg, this kind of delay is routine business. He flies DC-9s for the airline. A passenger this morning, he is scheduled to command another flight later that day. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain. I hope you had a good Christmas. We're just getting our wings cleared as we've had a bit of snow overnight. And when that's finished, we're ready for takeoff for some warmer weather. I handpicked the airline's best cabin crew to take care of you today. We all hope you have a nice flight. 
Finally, Scandinavian Airlines Flight 751 is cleared to proceed. There are build-ups of snow that the crew must avoid on the way to the runway. Would have been nice of them to clear the snow. Well, that would have made it too easy. Approaching holding point, runway 08. Roger, Scandinavian 751. You are cleared for takeoff from runway 08. Spoilers? Armed. Auto brake, take off and armed. Runway update performed. Checklist completed. Set power. Despite the winter conditions, the takeoff is routine. V1, rotate. Selected. When pull theories up for the gear, I heard things which was different. Just 25 seconds into the flight, as the plane is climbing, there is a problem. When you hear things that are different from the normally, you get suspicious. There was a really big roar in the aircraft, like, almost like an explosion. Boom! was uh, another banging noise that I just thought, what is that? I had never heard that before. It's obvious the source of the noise is the right engine. It sounds serious. I believe it's a compressor stall. I took the, the right throttle and I moved a little back, but there it, it really became strange because the engine uh, performance increased when I reduced the throttle. It's like if, if you're sitting in your car and you're turning your, your wheel to the left and the car is driving to the right, you get confused. We're not supposed to like call into cockpit now. And then I thought, this is an emergency. I have to call the captain. But Captain Rasmussen doesn't respond to the call. He's too busy trying to figure out what's going wrong with his plane. I couldn't see anything on the instrument. They were quite stable and, and they're quite normal range, uh, and, uh, no, no problem. But, but I could hear those roaring every second. He searches for telltale signs of attack or structural failure. And I looked up at the, uh, the cabin pressure, because if you have a, a, a bomb or, or a freight door and thing, which is uh, ripped off, uh, that'll, that'll give a, a decompression. In the cabin, pressure levels are stable. But the crew has other concerns. I saw the smoke and it smelled burnt. What should we do about this? Just 3,200 feet above the ground, the emergency escalates. The right engine quits. When we have flown a little over one minute, uh, the right engine just went down. I had a very, very short moment of thinking that I was in a, in a nightmare and just dreaming. I was confused. I was really confused. Two seconds later, the left engine also quits. The plane is now powerless. One engine drop and then another engine drop. I thought that it wasn't true. It wasn't true, it wasn't real. Less than a minute and a half after takeoff, the DC-9 begins falling from the sky. And after that, it was complete silence. And I think that was the worst moment for me. Just being in the air, and it's so quiet. It was like a bird just sailing through the sky. So then I started to, to get scared. Engine relay. 
As the pilots try to restart their engines, things get even worse. The left engine erupts in flames. I saw the exhaust gas temperature was rising uh, rapidly. Max temperature was around 680.